Welcome to Geared Up, brought to you by National Car Rental. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. It's a very special episode today. That's right. It is our top tech of 2017. The whole year, we've we've distilled it down. And we've also found some not-so-great tech of That's 2017. That's right. Coming up flops. later on, we're going to have our top gadgets of the year, plus our biggest flops. Yes. So we're going to be running them down. So it's after Christmas here, Andrew. That's what, right. What'd you get? Well, you know, it is... Uh, on, by my watch, December 18th. Yes. So I actually got a time machine. <laughs> yes, sir. Little secret here. We're recording this before Christmas, but you're going to be seeing it after Christmas. Yes. So let us know what you got down in the comments below. We want to know uh, what you walked away with. You know, I'm thinking either time machine, transporter, or cloak of invisibility. I'll take any one of those three. That last one, cloak <laughs> of invisibility. Before we jump in, Let's remind you to subscribe to Geared Up. Yes, we're everywhere. That's right. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher. But the easiest thing to do is to go to geekwire.com slash geared up. Mm -hmm. And you can find everything there. You can yes. also subscribe to the live streams at facebook.com slash geekwire or youtube.com slash gear live. That's a great way to get a behind the scenes view yes. of the show each and week. And to see us. To actually see us. That's right. Also, a big thanks to our title sponsor of Geared Up, National Car Rental. That's right. You can check them out at nationalcar.com. You can also check out Andrew's show, Technically Speaking, mm -hmm. for National Car Rental. What the, what's that show about, Andrew? Technically Speaking is a show where I feature the best tech from both a hardware and software perspective targeted towards the business traveler. So it's not it's not just for business travelers because this tech is pretty much cool for anybody, but um it's distilled down for people who are on the go a lot but still need some of the, you know, the best tech, the coolest gadgets in their life. Awesome. So you can find that show technically speaking at youtube.com slash national car rent. That's right. All right. So with that, let's jump in. It is time for our top technology of the year. All right. I'm scared. Let's okay. See. Number one. This is one. this is Andrew's pick for the best TV of best the year. Best TV, yes. What is this TV? This right here is LG's line of OLED TVs. So OLEDs are cool because they don't require backlighting. They the pixels themselves light themselves up basically. So you get these super thin TVs and the cool thing is that OLEDs have been prohibitively expensive over the past, you know, 5 years or so. And this year they've actually dropped down to something where they're not cheap, but they are affordable for people looking for a nice TV. So one of the best ones you can get is the C7. Now, the cool thing about LG's line of OLEDs, by the way, whether you go with like a B7, C7, they're all, they go up in letter all the way up to the G. All, what you're paying for between the different lines is more features around the screen, but they all have the same screen itself. Mm. But what you're paying for is like better speakers or better remote control. You're not paying for a better panel because the display is the same across the board. So you can get an inexpensive TV that'll probably be the best picture you've ever seen. 4K, high dynamic range, um, just just amazing. It's amazing. It's 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 great to see finally the OLEDs coming down in price. So in my living room, Andrew, we have a 36 inch uh, 720p TV. Oh. So. I went to my parents' house okay. over the Thanksgiving holiday, and we watched Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. on from Netflix mm -hmm. in, on their 4K TV. Mm. I have to tell you, my wife and my daughter and I, we sat there, our jaws dropped. Wow. So I know the OLED, OLED, the OLED TV yes. is an even a step even above yeah. many of the other TVs that you might get at 1080p or whatever. Absolutely. I, I mean... So wow, I, it's 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 stunning if you haven't seen one of these TVs or just sat there and watched it in a living room as opposed to like a showroom at a Best oh, Buy. Oh yeah, or something yeah. Like the that. showrooms they they blast the color. They have yeah. it's it's not the same. You put it in your house in in the environment you typically watch content in. And the cool and the cool thing about OLED, the best part is the blacks are truly black because again, there's no backlight. So every other TV, um, just to give you some background. Um, to light up the TV, there's lights inside of the panel. So if something's black on the TV, there's still a light behind it. With OLED, the in individual pixels can be just turned completely off. So it's as if when the TV's off, that's what it looks like. So if something's supposed to be black, it'll be truly black. And so you get this infinite contrast. So it's uh, it's amazing. And so so you said you had a 36-inch 720p TV. 
are you are you going for the upgrade? Well, what's going on? It, we've got a nice little place where it fits <laughs> in our house. We're very, <laughs> we're very practical, That's Andrew. It. I drive it a 2007 right Camry, <laughs> my 36 inch 720p TV. It fits perfectly. So you know, I don't know. <laughs> we're just going to keep on living in 2007. All right, I let's think. go to your parents' house. Right. You want to right. watch something. So that that is item number one our, in our technology picks yes. of the year: the LG OLED 4K TV. That's right. All right. Let's move on. What might you want to use oh, with look at this. your OLED TV? Absolutely. This is the new Xbox One X. Yeah. Pick number two. Yes. Of the consoles, why did you pick this? Because there are others. And we might have one coming up yeah. later on in the show. But what about the Xbox One X made it on your list? Well, the thing with this one, and this is you know, this is my perspective, and I know there's other perspectives out there. For me, when I have a nice TV and a nice sound system, I want the best content to be displayed on it so right now there's no better console as far as visual and audio than the xbox one x if you want that experience where you get true 4k the high dynamic range and all that um the xbox one x is where it's at i've been playing i also own just for the record i own a nintendo switch i own a ps4 pro so all the main consoles that are out there i do have in my house my preference right now is the xbox one x strictly because it, it looks and sounds the best on my system and that's what you want you don't want you know you don't want a nice 4k tv but you know watching all your movies on vhs you just it doesn't make any sense right so that's, that's kind of what it is is anybody really doing that on a 4k i don't TV? think Nobody's they are doing that right because on a 4k TV. because they have a 4k tv and they want the best content <laughs> exactly so that's kind of where i'm at um it just came out so it is expensive it's 500 dollars where you can get an xbox one s for 250 half the price um, or even Black Friday pricing was 189 so it is you know it's 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 the most expensive console out there but the power that's packed inside of it I think uh, makes the price um, more palatable I guess but you, you've been playing this too as well right we have what been think? Yep, been playing it here in the office Madden mm -hmm. um, all sorts of games Call of Duty yes I really like it and to me the difference between playing for example the Xbox Xbox 1S on a you know standard 1080p TV and the Xbox 1X mm -hmm. on a 4K TV is kind of like going from AM to FM radio. Mm. You know, it's like you listen to the AM radio or a regular TV speaker or something you're like I can hear it just fine. Yeah. You know, it's everything's it's, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. But then you get into the 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 full high dynamic range, yep. everything you're talking about with the 4K TV, it's just uh, it's one step above. Yeah, you didn't realize what you were missing until you yeah. saw it. That's kind of like the 4K that you just talked about a minute ago. Yeah, that that said, I mean, once you get into the game, uh, to me, uh, you know, the ex the game experience is what matters right. most. The, the, right. the visuals are dressing. And, That's true. And I think if you're, you know, on a budget, I think the Xbox One X, at, well, Xbox One S, is a perfectly fine console. Yes, I think the Xbox One X. You know, again, it's it's my personal pick. Um, for most people, I think you're right. If you don't have, you know, the best TV and the best surround sound and all this, where like you want to pump the best through that stuff, if you just want to get a console to play some games on, there's no need to spend five hundred dollars. You can spend, you know, two hundred or two fifty to get something that is very comparable. Yeah. All right. If you're just joining us, we are talking about our top technology picks of the year. That's We've right. talked about the LG OLED 4K TV. Xbox One X. Mm -hmm. Coming up, it's our smartphone picks of the year. Yeah. You're not going to want to miss this. You're listening to Geared Up, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Geared Up. It is time for Geared Up's smartphone picks of the year. Yeah. Brought to you by National Car Rental. Big thanks to National Car Rental for sponsoring Geared Up every week. They're our title sponsor. You can check them out at nationalcar.com. All right, Andrew, the smartphone picks of the year. Yes. Number one is your phone and mine. There it is. The iPhone 10. iPhone 10. So there were a lot of expectations built mm -hmm. up for this device. It's a thousand dollar device, yep. even more if you get the highest level of storage. Correct. Why is this one of your smartphone picks of the year? Uh, for me, I mean, it's for me personally. I've hated the size of the plus sized phones. Absolutely. Yep. And the reason I would buy them though is because I wanted the best camera that was available and that was always on the plus size phones, whether it was optical image stabilization or the dual camera lens. Portrait mode. Um, portrait mode. Exactly. So it was like I want the best phone. Um I want the battery life. 
I hate how it feels in my hand. I've got a brick in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I put up with that for four generations. You know, the six plus, six S plus, seven plus. Uh, I guess I had the I had the eight plus for a month before uh, the iPhone 10 came out. But I wanted the phone that gave me a nice large screen and a smaller footprint. And honestly, I mean, Apple, this is the biggest redesign since the original iPhone. And when you talk about between generation redesigns, um, the OLED display looks fantastic. Perfect size for me. Um, and ultimately, like, I want to go with what Apple, if I'm using that phone, what they see as a future versus what they see as this is the best of the last generation. This is the penultimate phone that we can make, which would be the 8. I think they they perfected that form factor with the 8, but we'll never see that form factor again. Um, you know, it's time to get rid of the home button, get used to the gestures and all that with iOS. And so I think that's the that's my pick. Phone of the year. Phone of the year. Phone of Absolutely. the year. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. And we've got three others to talk about, yeah. but in terms of the, the number one, mm -hmm. this is your smartphone yeah. of the year. I think gesture-based navigation, we're going to start seeing bleeding over into other phones as well. I will say that the gestures in the UI were the big surprise for me. I got this phone for the exact reason that you mentioned. I wanted the screen size without the phone size. Yeah. And the ability, though, to navigate with the, the thumb swipe instead of the home button. I go back to my wife's phone, and I'm trying to use it. And I'm, I literally, it takes me a couple seconds to remember, how did I get around this right, thing? Right, right. Because you're switching you're from swiping up touching from the, from the screen. Yeah, but, but it really is a difference because it's multiple modes. It's a button press on a hardware button is a completely different place mm -hmm. to me than a swipe up. And if all of the motions that navigate the UI are simply swipes on the screen, it becomes sort of the same plane in your mind yeah. to me. Very and you're fluid. not switching back and forth. It, it's it's subtle, but it's very meaningful yeah. in terms of how to, to interact with your phone. I agree. I agree. Great cameras on this phone as well. Um, that's not to say there weren't other great phones out there, though. I think we're about to go that's right. into our next pick. Let's talk about this one. This is Another the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. That's right. This was so a comeback good. story. Yeah. In fact, it's oh, probably man. the smartphone comeback of the year because, oh, as you remember, yes. the Galaxy Note 7 was the one that blew up, blew caught up. fire. Yes, and then they re-released it, kept catching fire again, yeah. canceled it. The Galaxy Note 7 was a mess, and Samsung acknowledged it right before they released the Note 8 at the event they talked about. They apologized and all this. Put out the Note 8, and this phone is packed with technology. I mean, this is one of the best phones you can put in your pocket if it fits in your pocket because it is big this is one of those phones that's very big i think it might be a 6.4 inch display so very large if you love the stylus though this is the only phone for you um, that has the stylus with it the software is android um battery life's great camera is fantastic as well again you can't go wrong like i said the iphone was my uh smartphone of the year but if you like Android and you pick up a Note 8, you are not going to be suffering in any, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. You are within one tenth of an inch, 6.3 inches. I just 6.3 inches up. versus 6.4. But, but that is a That's giant large. display. Very giant big display. display. Um, and it's an impressive display, but it is a large phone. Um, with It's almost like it's a target, it's a niche phone because it's also one of those almost $1,000 phones. But with the stylus and things like that, it has features that it's targeted towards a certain type of user. And so if that's not something you need, then you can go with the Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, get it for a little cheaper, um, drop the stylus, and still have, you know, 90% of what the Note 8 offers. Got it. So that's smartphone of the year number two, yeah, number the two. Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Mm -hmm. Next up, another one of your mm, picks, Andrew. 5T, yeah. This is the OnePlus 5T. So what is this? I've actually most never heard of this phone this before. Yeah. This is the, most average people out there, the average consumer, doesn't know what One OnePlus is. OnePlus is a company that makes inexpensive smartphones with flagship features. So they used to call themselves, I don't know if they called themselves or someone called them, the flagship killer. Hmm. And What's happening? Is my phone ringing? So you would have what you would have is a three hundred to five hundred dollar device, depending on which year it was, that would compete almost line for line with an eight hundred or nine hundred dollar device. So one plus five T five hundred dollars four ninety nine. If you're considering picking up a phone 
and you don't have a lot of money, or you just don't, even if you have a lot of money, you just don't want to spend all that money on a Samsung device, pick up the OnePlus 5T, great camera, great screen, great, like pretty much great everything, um, and you, it's hard to go wrong with it. Dual cameras on back, all that stuff that you expect from a flagship phone you can get for 500 bucks. It's interesting. We've seen this trend where the Android phones in particular are taking on the characteristics of high-end smartphones, even at budget prices. That's right. We saw this with things like the T-Mobile Revel and, yes. and others like that. So really good trend that I think is a nice counterbalance mm -hmm. to the sky-high prices that we've seen on iOS yeah. with the iPhone 10. Not just iOS, but also the flagship Android phones as well, like the Samsung phones. Like Those are very expensive phones. And if you can get away from you know wanting to have a brand name, you can get a great phone. Even if you've never heard of this phone before, this is a fantastic phone. And for $500, it's hard to beat it. All right. So that is the OnePlus 5T. It is our third smartphone yes. of the year. Let's now go to the fourth. There it is. Pixel. This, this is the Google Pixel 2. Pixel 2. So for people who haven't really followed Google's smartphone hardware, because I, I, I think this might be more of a an Android thing where people mm -hmm. really pay attention to this, what's unique about the Pixel lineup? Well, first of all, the Google Pixel 2 is the best smartphone camera of the year. Hmm. Anything you point this camera at and press the button to take the picture, it's going to look fantastic. Whether it's a person, whether it's a, some Vista somewhere, no matter what it is, this camera is fantastic. Google has cornered the market, and I don't know how people are going to catch up, with machine learning. So Google knows because everybody's uploading their pictures to Google Photos, right? So Google knows, for example, if you have a if you have iPhone or Samsung, you take a portrait mode photo, let's say of a glass of wine, right? So the the glass is see through, so it's hard to tell where that where it ends and the background begins and all that. You'll have weird blur effects, and it's not really knowing. You take it with a Pixel, perfect, because Google has so many pictures of glasses of wine or whatever in their you know in their database database exactly. It knows how to optimize it because it has so many of these. Whereas, you know, Samsung probably has none. Sam no one uploads pictures to Samsung. Apple has um, iCloud photo library, but they're also very much about privacy. So they're not mining your photos for that data. So this is one of the, the more positive uh, results of Google doing all that data mining is that you take a picture of something, it knows, okay, here's another similar picture of this thing. We know how to optimize this to make it look great. And it really, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, Google is able to do portrait mode photos on the front and back from a single lens. It doesn't need the dual lens like other cameras, other phones need. It does it with one lens and it does it better than phones with two lenses. So, um, but aside from all that, this is Google's play for, I think, the average person. Like this is their iPhone. You know, all the other phones kind of have a, have a niche about them, and this is their this is our general phone for the average person who wants a smartphone on Android. Um, great features, fair price. Starts at about five ninety nine. Five ninety nine, um, with a camera that is hard to beat. Those are four great smartphones. That's right. It, was it really like one of the best years ever for smartphones? Oh, yeah. By far. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, again, you have, you know, the Pixel, amazing. Um, Samsung coming back with a phone that is, you know, it's unreal. Like these really are at this at this point when people say it's a computer in your pocket, it really is a computer in your pocket. We've had Apple come out with uh, basically the perfected version of the iPhone 6 form factor and the 8 and 8 Plus and they, their phone that's taking them into the future after that. And then you have budget phones that really can match, you know, not perfectly, but can almost match everything I just talked about from the major brands. So I'm, I'm excited to see what 2018 has to, has to offer. Excellent. So those are Geared Up's Smartphones of the Year, brought to you by National Car Rental. We will be right back with our flops of the oh, yeah. year. You're listening to Geared Up's Technology Review, the top technology of 2017. And we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Geared Up. We are running down our top technologies of 2017, mm -hmm. our picks of the hardware, gadgets, consumer electronics that really stood out for the past year. It is time for our biggest letdowns. Yes, yeah, flops. Just say it. Just call flops, it what it is. Flops. Coming up later on, we're going to have our two picks of the hardware of the year. Yes. But right now, it's time for our biggest flops. Number one, Andrew. 
Essential phone. The essential phone. The essential phone. Okay. This was the Andy Rubin phone. There was a lot of anticipation yes, for this. Was. Andy Rubin, the father of Android, mm-hmm. he left Google, started his own startup, yep. and they came out with their own phone. Mm-hmm. We had some discussions about this on the show across the, the months. Yep. Why ultimately did this thing not do as well as people expected it to I mean, do? I don't know what was happening behind the scenes there, but the phone got delayed. I mean, so pre-orders started. Someone tweeted at him and said, hey, when is it going to ship? Because there was no shipping date. And he responded to them saying, well, if it wasn't going to ship within a month, I wouldn't be comfortable taking people's money. A month goes by. No phones are shipping. Um, so that's mistake number one. They announced multiple colors. It's still only available in two colors out of the four they announced with. That's mistake. I mean, it's just broken promise after broken promise. The phone itself ships with this dual camera that they talked about how great it was because one's monochrome and one's color, and they both grab different information from the scene and put it all together. And the and it sh- the camera's terrible. Like, so like you press the shutter and you wait three seconds, then it takes it. Like, just terrible. Now they've released updates over time. But the phone just hasn't lived up to what the hype said it would be. And the idea was that it would be sort of a modular phone. And that's yes. many, the ships with different attachments. You mentioned the it's camera. There's only one attachment available, so, which is the camera, 360-degree okay. camera. But, you know, the, the essential phone has, has gotten two price drops. Isn't that a good thing, though? It's, it's good for the consumer. Because the phone, I think, is in a better position now. You're basically going to feel ripped off because it's shipped at six ninety nine, seven hundred dollars. It is not worth the price of like an iPhone eight or a Galaxy S eight or any of those phones. No. So they've dropped the price first to four ninety nine and then to four hundred fifty. Four fifty, yes. So that is a substantial price drop. I mean, that's you know two hundred fifty bucks less in just a matter of months. That indicates though you don't do two two price drops right away if the phone is like selling and you can't keep them in stock you don't do that right no, absolutely not no so unfortunately phone the phone is a beautiful device this display is amazing they really need to kind of get the company like the manage like do things properly if you say something's going to happen make sure it happens the day you say it's going to happen don't have broken promises don't have people waiting for stuff now, Andy Rubin has gone on a temporary leave from the company. Yes, he's back. Okay. He's back. He's back. But, yes, he did even take a leave right in the middle of all these price drops. The The head of the company leaves for a few weeks. It's just – it seems like a mess over there. So that's letdown of the year number one. Right. Flop of the year right. number one. Speaking of products that are not selling and are all just laying on shelves in warehouses, the other flop of the year – I'm wearing it. Snap. Spectacles. <laughs> All right. So this was a device that essentially works in conjunction with the Snapchat. The That's Snapchat. Right. The, Snapchat. The, app. the Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you put these glasses on. It has circular cameras. You can take uh, I don't know ten second videos in circular circular videos with them. So anything you're looking at, you're getting pictures of. When you take your phone out, they I think they launched it the wrong way. They, it was sort of a. a Scarcity model. They yeah. had them in their vending machines. Right. They were just in specific spots around mm-hmm. the country. Which is cool for a little while. Yeah. Like, I'm not against that way of launching, but to keep doing it for multiple months, then people are like, oh, I can't get it. All right, I'm, I'm done with that. Moving on. Yeah, like, if it, was, if it was just like that for maybe 10 days, the first 10 days a different city had it and then available everywhere, okay, it would have done better. Um, the other thing, though, Instagram has been taking over all of Snapchat's features, stealing them, if you want to use that term. They've basically made a Snapchat clone inside of Instagram, and people have started shifting over. Yeah. Why do I need to use Insta- Why do I need to use Snapchat if I use Instagram anyway, and now they have all the Snapchat features there as well? Why should I use Snapchat? Some people are thinking that. And then if that's the case, why would I buy Spectacles? So this is interesting in part because Snap – essentially rebranded itself to Snap Inc. Yes. and positioned itself more as a camera hardware company yes. than as a maker of an app. And with... the only camera they've released is this? Yes. So where does Snap go from here? I don't here? know. I don't know. Yeah. They're still trying to – they just announced a massive redesign for Snapchat. That's coming soon. Um, but that is back to the app. That's not hardware. We haven't heard anything from them about what other hardware they're going to be doing. And I don't know. I don't know. I think they're. I think they're struggling right now. I think they're scared. 
um, what is Instagram going to do? And I don't know that maybe they need to be purchased by someone because I don't know. I don't know what they do with this. Okay. All they right, have well. warehouses full of these. I mean, was it hundreds of thousands of these that are unsold? There's there's a lot. There's, there's a lot, lot of these that are unsold. That's money they spent on manufacturing that no one is buying. Yeah. All right. Terrible. So those are our two letdowns of the year. We're going to take one last break here, and when we come back, it is the hardware of the year. Our picks. Two devices. Andrew's got one, and I've got one that essentially changed the way we go about games, communication, mm-hmm. and really living our lives. Yes. Big, impactful products. Yes. Geared Up's Technology of the Year, coming up next. You're listening to Geared Up. All right, Andrew, those were our letdowns of the year. It is now time for the top technology of the year. The complete opposite end of the spectrum. That's right. You've got a pick, and I've got a pick. So these are devices that really changed either the way we game or Mm -hmm. live our lives Mm -hmm. or or essentially interact with the rest of the world, in my case. That's right. So gadget of the year, number one. I'll go first. All right. The Echo Show. Echo Show. Amazon. That's right. So this device, for me personally, was a game changer. I think the Echo came along, and there was a groundswell uh, recognition that, hey, having an assistant in your home, a voice-based assistant that you can interact with, is game-changing. For me, though, the real change came when they added the screen. And the ability to have this device in my house, it was easy. It's easy to walk past the Echo every day and not think yes. about it. But when you have this thing here, the Echo Show, essentially prompting you, you walk yeah, by it, stop. it gives you little reminders, hey, try this, try this, here's a headline. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there, you can do video calling, you know, even just some of the basic Echo functions, like the ability to get music lyrics. I mean, it turns into a little karaoke machine. Yep. You finally know all the lyrics for those songs right. that you might sing or the new songs that might be being played on the radio. What are the commands you use the most at home on your Echo? Uh, timers still. Mm. We still do a lot of timers. A lot um, of timers. We do. Uh, I thought you were an Instant Pot guy. You need yeah, timers for that. Yeah, that's that's true. We, we, we cook a lot of different things. That should have been your gadget. Uh, yeah, here. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Instant Pot. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't use the Instant Pot as much as I thought I would, okay, honestly. Okay. So maybe that was one of my <laughs> letdowns. But uh, we listen to a lot of music. Okay. A lot of music. Whereas before we were, you know, we had a Bose with the uh, iPhone docked yeah. into it, an iPod docked into it. It's just not, it's not the same as being able to call out with your mm-hmm. voice. Ha- see it on the screen. Um, we're we're doing a lot of smartphone controls or s- smart home controlling with this this device. You know, I, I recognize it's just a step up and evolution from the regular Echo. But for me, the addition of a screen is the game changer that makes the Echo Show my pick for gadget of the year. It, it's worthy of that. I mean, I have the Echo Show as well, um, and the same thing. Like as I said in the past, the regular Echo devices, I buy them. I'm excited about them. I don't notice them. I forget they're there. And then when I do notice them, it's like, oh, let me let me think of something to ask it. I'm like, I just think of some random trivia question just so I could use it because I spent money on it. I better get use out of this. Echo Show is always showing you, hey, here's a headline. Ask me more about this. Yeah. And that kind of just reminds you. And it's cool to just say, hey, tell me tell me about that story. It's crazy. I, yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure that the engagement stats that Amazon tracks with the Echo, I'm sure they know. They could look in and say, users engaged with this device this many times a day on mm-hmm. average they've got all that stuff yep. they may not have it down to the individual user at least they may hope not yeah but i'm sure that the engagement with the echo show overall as a population is much higher than with the non touch screen oh yeah i think i think you're right on that all right so that's mine claire can i have this this pouch can you reach that yeah yeah thank you claire thanks claire what is this this is my gadget of the year <laughs> my gadget of the year. There it where. is. There it is. All right. Yes. Let's unveil it. It is the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch. Yes. The Nintendo Switch. This is my favorite tech of the year because there's never been anything like this ever in the history of tech, at least in its product category. There's been the Nintendo 3DS, Game Boy, etc., portable gaming, right? There's been home consoles, whether it's the Wii, Xbox One X, we talked about earlier, PlayStation. There's never been a console, a full console, that you can play at home, and then when it's time to go, you just lift it up and take it. And your and gaming playing, experience goes with you. Game, Then you're playing the full games. Right. You're, there's no compromise. Like, that's 
the best part. When they announced the Switch, I was like, okay, so you're playing Zelda at home on your TV, and then when you remove it, you're playing like a Super Nintendo version of Zelda or something. Like, that was my idea. No, you're playing the full experience either way, which is crazy. So now you're on the go, you're playing your games, and then you see someone, hey, Todd, what's up? And it's like, hey, Todd, here, you take this controller, I'll take this controller, and now we're both playing a two-player game, and this, like, that's just, that's crazy. Yeah. It's still crazy to me. Nine months later, it still blows my mind that this is a real product because it's such a smart thing. It's a smart way to make a game console. No one's thought of it before. I'm sure when people first saw it, they were like, that's never going to work. Or, you know, using it like this is so tiny, no one's ever going to want to do that. But it, it actually all works, and it works very nicely. 300 bucks. Unlike the Xbox One X, your earlier console pick, this thing is somewhat affordable. Somewhat affordable. And the other cool thing about the Switch, because ultimately, when you buy a game console, it's about playing games, right? Yes. They launched with The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. It gets rated as like one of the top one or two video games ever released, right? So it's rare to release the best game of all time. <laughs> About eight months later, yeah. they released Super Mario Odyssey, which is now like on par or beating The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So it's like, hey, Nintendo just released the best game of all time. It's going to be a long time before someone beats that. And then Nintendo's like, okay, hold my beer. And Nintendo beats their own thing in the same calendar year. This is crazy. It's really interesting to me as a symbol of Nintendo's resurgence and just the way that fortunes can turn so quickly mm -hmm. in this industry. If you looked at Nintendo after the release of the Wii U, I yep. think a lot of people were counting them out. Absolutely. Questioning, hey, is there even going to be an, another yeah. console generation from Nintendo right. and others? And now you have this, and really they've proven so many of the skeptics wrong. It's really similar to the release of the original Wii when yeah. Nintendo redefined the category. Mm -hmm. And you saw Microsoft and Sony try and catch up with things like the PlayStation Move and yeah. the Xbox right, Connect right, yes. in sort of a different way. It, to me, one of the interesting things in 2018 will be, will you see Microsoft and Sony mimic some aspects of this in mm -hmm. terms of the hybrid console and the ability to switch from a traditional living room console to something that's mobile seamlessly. Right, that's interesting. So Microsoft has done it with Xbox Play Anywhere. So if you have a PC, a right. laptop, you can play many, not all, but many of the Xbox games. If you buy the downloadable version on your Xbox, you also get the downloadable version included for your mo for your PC. But in a, but in a seamless it's way. It's not the same it's, thing. No, no I know. It's not the same yeah. thing. Um, but honestly, they could have the potential, though, Microsoft, to, to use yes. that technology to come out with right. more of a seamless, integrated uh, living room to mobile hardware Absolutely. solution. I think what Nintendo did was, you know, they, they surprised everyone. You know, a lot of times, most people don't realize this, but let's say um, Samsung announces a phone in August and Apple announces a phone in September. And Apple announces three features that Samsung announced. And people are like, oh, they copied those three features. Right. There was no time for them to copy. There was no, like, that one-month period, everything's locked in months and yeah. months and months before. So when Nintendo announced this, I think they caught the industry by surprise to where Microsoft or Sony didn't have anything like this in the pipeline. And if they do now, it's going to take a few years for us. It's not going to come out in 2018. So for this market, like, I think those other two are really focused on the home console system, powerful consoles, amazing graphics and there is obviously a market for that the best games no compromises there the switch not the most powerful console you're not going to get the best graphics here there's no 4k but it's the first time you can play full video games portably anywhere you are so there's never been anything like this um it totally caught me by surprise i was expecting something stupid when they said okay we have our big announcement i'm like okay roll your eyes what's going to be the follow-up to the wii u and it was, it was great. So that's the Nintendo Switch. Andrew's pick for Hardware of the Year. Yes. Mine is the Echo Show. 
Lots of great stuff on here. And frankly, if you were disappointed by any of your holiday gifts, I think we've just given you your own personal shopping list. There you go. Of things to go out and check out. Turn all that. (laughs) Keep the gift receipt and get this stuff. All right. Good stuff. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Geared Up in 2017. We've got lots of great stuff in store in 2018. I'm looking forward to it. Until next time, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Thanks for watching and listening to Geared Up.